Okay, let's talk about the Aufbau principle and Hund's rule. So um, these are going to be the, and the Pauli exclusion principle, which we're going to talk about. Uh, these are going to help us answer this question of which orbital will an electron occupy. So we had that energy diagram on the last um, video where we were saying, okay, for a multi-electron system, that's how we go through it. Um, now we're going to give ourselves some rules to help set this stuff up. First off, we're going to add electrons around our nucleus, or we're going to add electrons to our atom uh, one at a time. So one by one, and we're going to fill our lowest energy orbitals first. This is called the Aufbau principle, so the build-up principle. Um, that's Aufbau Pretty sure that's how that gets translated in German. Don't at me. Um, so this one is basically saying we have to start at those lower energy orbitals, fill those with electrons, and then go on up to higher energy. We're also going to uh, fill orbitals one electron at a time for degenerate orbitals with all of our spins aligned. And this is going to be Hund's rule. So for example here, if we go to the slides here, if we have a p orbital, let's say we got ourselves a 2p. One, two, three orbitals. Okay, so this we could say our 2px, 2py, and our 2pz. And if we had to place, oh, for example, let's say we had five electrons that we had to fill. Hund's rule is going to tell us that we put an electron in and we draw electrons with these little half arrows. We never use a full arrow for an electron. Sometimes books will do that. It's wrong. It's always these little half arrows. Um, we're going to put one electron in and then using the Hund's rule and the Aufbau principle, we're going to add one more electron. And Hund's rule is going to say we need to add that electron with the same orientation of the spin. So spin up. We've got the air, half arrow pointing up, right? Um, then we're going to add another one, Aufbau and Hun, and it's going to be spin up. So presently we have three electrons added. We've got two more to go based off of this example I made up. So now we add one to the next orbital that's spin down. Now, how do I know how many electrons can get added to an orbital? That's going to come from the Pauli exclusion principle. Um, and I'm going to shrink down here for a second. Pauli exclusion principle is going to tell us that um, we can only have, uh, basically, a Pauli exclusion principle is going to say, for any given set of quantum numbers, we can only have one electron that has that set of electron, or that set of quantum numbers. So when we go back to n equals, in this case, 2, L is equal to 1, M sub L could equal negative 1, 0, and 1, right? And all of this stuff, right? So our 2 is coming from there. The 1 goes right there. This goes right here, this right there, this right there. The quantum number we didn't write was m sub s. Well, m sub s can always equal plus or minus one half. But this value of m sub l is going to have plus and minus one half this value of m sub l is going to have plus or minus one half and this value is going to have plus or minus one half so for every one of these subshells we can fit two electrons inside that's the punchline and that's because we can have an m sub s of positive one half or negative one half so two electrons can fit Aufbau principle tells us you put in one at a time and you fill the lowest energy electron or the lowest energy orbitals in first. 
the p orbitals are all degenerate to start with so we put an electron in the first one and then we put an electron in the next one and then we put an electron in the next one after that and all of their spins are up or in the same direction that's hun's rule and the poly exclusion principle is then saying okay well we can't put the next electron in also spin up otherwise two electrons would, ha would have the exact same number of quantum numbers or have the, uh, the same four quantum numbers, that's not allowed. So the next one that goes into the next available orbital has to be spinned down. And then at that point in time, all of the number of electrons are, like all the principal quantum, or, hmm, nope, all of the quantum numbers for this thing right here are taken because there are only two possible sets that could fit in there anyways. So now we have to go to the next orbital over and we can put our electron in there so we have one up one up one up for a total of three electrons spin up one down one down so for a total of two electrons spin down for a total of five overall elect excuse me a total of five overall electrons and that's really the gist of these three uh rules if you will so the off ball principle poly exclusion principle and hun's rule um they're going to tell us how we're going to fill our electrons into uh, our orbitals and in what orientation those electrons are going to have. Why do we care about any of this? Because this is just a bunch of rules at this point. We care because this allows us to predict uh, things like bonding between atoms um, and it allows us to predict uh, behaviors of atoms as well. So I think the next, uh, nope, we have a, just a couple more uh, little things here, rule-wise, and then we'll talk into uh, how we can use this information over here um, to help us predict properties of atoms.